Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two in this best of three series in the Summit 2, brought to you by G28.com. It is, of course, Isurus Gaming, sponsored by HyperX, going against Sciencey Stuff, also known as Sens, also known as, I don't even want to try to look for the big name again. It was some sort of crazy ass long scientific name, but for now we'll call them Sciencey Stuff for Sens. That seems to work remaining. fine by me. I, of course, am Kyle Guy, going to be your host and lead caster. But joining me, I have a new swing and co-caster. Nerla had to step out after only one game. F4L was right there, and now he's here by my side. How you doing, my friend? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's, it's, it's NA Dota. It's, it's, it's all about America, you know, so I'm happy. Can't hate on that. USA, USA. USA all the way. That's what I'm talking about. Although it's not really USA. It's, uh, we got it's America. America and South America. It's America. No, no, no. No, Amer America got, fits uh... both. I know this one is oh, yeah. a... Is I one, guess this, so. Yeah, you sure. know, if you want to be more yeah. political. I Americas. Guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the Battle of the Americas, but you're absolutely right. Radiant is the North down. America going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the South American squad, the Argentinian team going against the Americans of the sciencey stuff. And, well, they came out on top previous game, throwing together a preface. Uh, well, it looks like they're going to do the same thing here. And, well, before we talk about this actual draft here, uh, Mr. F4L, remaining. what did you get to see much of last game? Did you have any impressions on what you had to witness? Dire team ban. Um, I can't say that I was paying that close of attention. That's okay. It kind of looked pretty one-sided. That's from what I saw. Yeah. They basically, they killed Spectre a couple times, but then the Earthshaker and Silencer got a lot. So I think, seconds. and then they just weren't able to do anything after Global was casted, so. Five seconds remaining. I agree, I agree. I mean, it was, it's all about the Global, baby, and it, it definitely worked out, and Ziz was undefeated in that game. Didn't even get takedown once. He put out a strong performance in the mid lane, and then the second day I got a hold of the global, we, we just saw it nonstop. And then you guys, Ags, easy into the refresher, and there was nothing that any support especially could do on the side of Isurus Gaming. And then eventually when they had all their attention on the main four, it was all Ink Dota able to farm up with ease, and by the end all he had to do was slam down the R button, and Ten it was a disaster for Isurus. So now, yeah. you know, the, the problem is is when it's a pick like Five Silencer that remaining. just does, is doing so well, you... It, you're like, is it worth a respect ban or not? And if we do, we risk mm -hmm. allowing someone else Giant through, like your Death pick. Prophets or, you know, like your Lycans, I guess. For Isurus, they really favor the Lycans still, and, you know, but they, they, they get rid of it. And this allows sciencey stuff to pick up Silencer and Spectre again. So I guess what's the answer going to be here, F4L? How do you address this heavy global? And it looks like Faceless Void and Nature's Prophet are the first two that Isurus want to do. I don't really agree with their solution to the draft. I think um, <clears throat> when you go against the Silencer, like Spectre first picks, and then an Ember, wow, that's like so greedy. Wow, I... they're going to need one hell of a selfless <laughs> support. Or maybe they're changing roles. Now, this could be... I feel like this is a support Silencer. Yeah, I was going to say, they could put Ziz now on a mid lane Ember to try to throw off Isurus Gaming a bit and just hold the silencer for his for his ultimate instead and use him as a support as opposed <coughs> to the mid lane core we saw him previously. And that's just one of the benefits to the hero. We've seen him extremely Ten flexible. So remaining. you get him out early and you know, it's not gonna be giving out a whole lot of information Five as far as the draft remaining. goes and Isurus are now gonna see this Ember pick and they're like, Ugh now how do we do to counterback this? Because Ember Reserve does a really time. good job on preventing any sort of heavy push and with Nature's Prophet already there. Isurus could have been considering it, but they double back with a lion. Dire team Interesting. Pick. Interesting picks. Interesting. I think they sort of drafted themselves into this situation where they have to put Nature's Prophet off lane and then Faceless Void safe lane. So that sort of limits their options if they could go aggressive. Because I actually think against these type of heroes, you can aggro tri lane. Mm -hmm. and punish them. I mean, you have to punish them some way, so you either have to be Ten more greedy remaining. than they are, or you have to gank them Ten and apply remaining. lots of pressure, take the towers, that kind of thing. We'll see. I mean, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. Who knows? It's like serious yeah. gaming. It's not like we all know exactly how they like to run with things, and especially when they had a... Oh, they only had a stand-in for the first game. It looks like uh, Mr. Uh, Dolce, or Dolce is back. He played a lot of uh, Legion Commander in the uh, previous series, but it's actually banned out by their own squad, so we won't see that. But, yeah, I mean, you're right. They could have gone with the new formidable kind of aggressive lineup to really punish maybe the Spectre. But, hey, I've seen Nature's Prophet also played in the mid lane. I don't think it would do the best against an Ember Spirit, but 
Who really knows what they're going to decide to do here? It's just all theory crafting, folks. As sciencey wow. stuff picks up greedy. one of the most. It just gets more greedy. Yeah, this is this is going to be interesting. So you know, now I serious know there's probably not going to be a lot of early aggression in the game. There's not going to be a lot of rotations, ganks, maybe like a formidable scuttle at the rune area, but I'm not imagining that uh, they're going to go for any sort of smoke attempts here with a silencer and now an enigma grab. You know, that Ten becomes a little remaining. more predictable as far as what they want to do. But, hey, Enigma, he's got to be the most scientific Five hero in the game, I guess. <laughs> Besides Tinker, right? Oh, yeah. Tinker's lasers wow, and good stuff. Call. Right? Tinker, yeah. too bad he's ass now, so <laughs> we, <won't> see, <laughs> we probably won't see him. But I guess if you had to pick probably someone, not. right there. It's like, Enigma's like a failed mad scientist experiment gone wrong, I guess. <laughs> Just <laughs> making do with what he's got. But we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm I like this Invoker pickup. Okay, explain, explain. I'm curious. I like it with Void. I think it's really strong. I know that DDX plays a really good invoker. Five seconds. Oh, yeah. Although I would like to see it with... I really think they should have like a dual roaming combo. I mean, there's a couple ways you can shut down Enigma. You can ward his entire jungle. Mm -hmm. That's one way. And then you can like force him into like Desai offlaning type thing, where he does Ancients for a little while. But I don't know how that works in this patch. I haven't tried it yet since they move the Ancients. Or you can have a dual roam support and ward the Enigma's jungle to where you just get vision instead of warding his camps. Mm -hmm. And then you just smoke gank him at level 1. And then the other option is to Ten aggressive try lane so that they're in a 2v3 and then you like send Five your two su remaining. supports are like always in the jungle and then they're always like trying to mess with Enigma Reserved. and or kill the dual lane. But I don't think any of those are possibilities when you have the lion pick up, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see what their plan is. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, if they have Nature's Prophet in the off lane, his Treants could, I guess, scout out and try to do some early blockage. But if they don't go for some sort of early five-man roll through the jungle and block out the camps, it's going to be difficult to prevent this Enigma from just getting to that Zai status of farm that we've seen many a time. And I do have to side note, did you uh, make sure you turned your open mic on, sir, so that people in Dota uh -oh. TV can hear? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Everyone thinks I'm talking to myself in the Dota TV world, but you'll, it's all right. You'll get cool, that. aren't you? Yeah, I am. I always talk to myself. It's okay. Always talking to myself. <laughs> all right, I turned it on. Now. All right, fantastic. So, so hey, hey, everyone in Dota TV, welcome F4L to the cast right now as he does get to join us. But thank you very much. Appreciate the people who have notified me and get underway this is you know america we're still getting used to it. but here we go tidehunter another yeah, hero tidehunter. so uh, the greed continues i suppose unless this is more a <laughs> this is room tiered, but yeah one of the most greedy drafts i have ever seen yeah. like this has to be a support Five silencer now i'm pretty sure it's like ember mid support silencer specter safe lane tide off lane and nickel jungle yeah T tide off lane we haven't seen in Quite a while. More. It's more about the the centaur as of recent, which actually hasn't been touched. That's interesting. When ooh, a fullback juggernaut. This is a spicy, juggernaut. spicy pickup from your Southern American squad right here. I'm digging it. Usually, you see the juggernaut with a skywrath, like when it's a roamer, because you can get that skywrath slow. And then also at level two, you get this ancient seal, which buffs the spin damage. So it gets pretty crazy. You can do like 500 damage. All right. Well, we'll try to put it together with a lion bit of lockdown. But yeah, later on, though, when you got your faceless void trying to set things up with the chrono, what is this juggernaut going to do? Prepare I mean, I guess you can omni battle. into the chrono. Yeah, he can omni into chrono. But outside of that, he can't really dish out additional right click oh. damage. So. I would wager fullback is going to just enhance that ultimate even further. Probably going to go with that Agnum Scepter kind of a build. We'll, we'll have to see yeah. how it goes. But hey, we're underway. We're in the game. This is game number two, a best of three series here at the Summon 2, brought to you by G28.com. Of course, in the Americas division, teams looking to bully on forward and try to get a hold of one or two spots in the real Summit America division. we got two to claim, and these young up-and-comers are trying to get a hold of it. As I will lead off your introductions on your radiant team, we got Mr. Dolce or Dulce. I, I can't remember who I was. It was, it was K-pop who was like knew exactly how the Argentinian tongue is supposed to pronounce this name, but I, I don't know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him Nature's Prophet for God's sakes here. As he goes to the off lane as your standard and uh, mid lane, it is gonna be that DDX Invoker, and I know you already gave him props, so I'm gonna expect a lot of big things from him. And the bottom, it's fullback on that Juggernaut. Nidara is going to be playing your lion, and that leaves Pepita as your farming faceless void. Yep, and on the dire in the top lane, we have the Lumden playing the support silencer, Ink Dota playing the farming specter, 
ZYZZ in the mid lane on this Ember Spirit. The battle Tempting blades. Time playing the jungle Enigma. And then in the off lane we have Fact Fiction playing the Tidehunter. Fact Fiction did a really nice Earth Shaker in that last game. Really good. Setting up some, some good plays and a formidable amount of Echo Slams. And I can't help but call Looks you like out. This... You called him ZYZZ. Is it that or is it Ziz? I don't really know. I don't know the guy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We'll call him either. But a name like that, like, what the hell do you expect, right? So. Looks right. like they're going to smoke ink mid. Okay, here we go. Because they have a haste on Lion. Yes, yes. Very nice. Lion would love to get on there. He already has the Hex at level 1, but uh oh, Ziz is actually heading his direction here. And his smoke's popped, but they don't see him quite yet. He's really waiting out. Oh, hey, hi! Ah, gets one auto attack in. Is like, uh, we give up and probably have to pull back instead and go back towards his lane. And we'll have to see how it goes yep. here. It's uh, it's gonna be a faceless void with this trio going against your uh, Tide Hunter. And mind you, the Ancient Pit is not where it used to be. It's a lot harder if you kind of want to go around the corner and just stack Ancients to farm later. He has to commit a lot more time to even do something like that. Yeah, I'm not actually sure how that works anymore. I haven't tried off lane Tide on Dire anymore. I don't actually think. You can stack them anymore. <laughs> I mean, you can't stack them. Can. You can stack them, I'm sure. You yeah, yeah, but you would lose like two waves. Yeah, I think. not worth the investment. Probably part of the reason we don't see this hero picked up nearly as much because I feel like a lot of teams, when they decide on their offlaner, they love ones who have something to fall back on. You know what I mean? Like a Batrider can go to the jungle. Nature's Prophet can always fall back in the jungle. Tidehunter used to be able to fall back and do in the ancient stacks, but not really anymore. But you know, we'll see. Is uh. I Wait. will say, though, that Dire offlane got a lot easier this patch. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but the Radiant Creeps, when they, they speed up way earlier, and then they just keep going fast. You know like, what? It's funny you say that. I don't think it's just this one. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about in general, right? Not just the one lane. Like, in general, the Creeps have sped up. Because I remember uh, when, when the patch dropped, 6.82, we were casting in the middle of a best of three, a Navi US versus Sna game. It was... Uh, myself and, and Zaori, and it, one of the first things that was all chatted was IX Mike saying, the creeps are faster now, and he had a bad block with his nature's profit, so it might be like globally, but that's funny you say that. Oh, on Dire the they work right. On Dire they work right though? Oh, that's uh -huh. weird. Like, on the, like in the Radiant safe lane. So like Radiant safe lane got nerfed. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but yeah, the creeps on Dire slow down in the safe lane, but on Radiant they don't it's interesting. That is interesting. I don't know. For players who know their blocks and are used to seeing it time and time again, they'll they would notice the subtle differences like that. While us measly pub plebs are like, the, the, the creeps are still <laughs> walking. That's cool. So I, I, we'll see if it's something they consider adjusting in the future. But that's funny because it's the second time I've heard that, and now it becomes more clear. And here we go. Curse gonna fly out. They're trying to zone back this uh, nature's prophet here, and with the now new support silencer, you know, we'll see. It's not as easy as like maybe having a Skywrath Mage, but he's certainly trying to do what he can. And yeah, Enigma going to town on this jungling. He's a uh, 15 and 0 right now as far as CS. Early harassment sounds like in the mid lane here is Ziz and DDX going toe to toe. Oh wow, Sunstrike is not going to be there. Just too many around, and it's Ziz who picks up your first blood on the Ember Spirit. That is unfortunate for them. Very. That is very troubling. <laughs> I mean, I think. It, Invoker should be doing really well against Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit has a rough time against ranged heroes that can right-click him. And Ember can definitely do that with Exort. Well, from what I've seen, this is a man. He, he don't back down for no one. No Invoker does not matter. He's, he's adding extra pressure. Maybe he's DDX, though, is a formidable Invoker player as he is. Maybe it just might be feeling out of his comfort zone by Ziz's playstyle here, but they want a help here, and they might get it. Here we go, spin to win, perhaps. Fullback can't quite get in there yet, but they time it out with the Sun Strike, and that's pretty much all they need. No spin even necessary, as they also get the help from Nature's Prophet, so they commit a lot to get the lane back. Invoker's like, hey, son of a bitch, I'm gonna get some help here from my allies to try to take control, and though they commit a lot here, this allows a little more farm time for Ink Dota on the Spectre. Yep. Probably wasn't the greatest TP, but then he just gets a haste room top lane, so all worth. <laughs> oh, that RNG working in his favor to get that, that express RNG. ticket right back up to top lane. Very nice stuff. And new runes, yeah, are spawned. It was a bounty then on the bottom here. Is uh, look at this fact fiction scouting oh. out, and they're gonna pincer. Lion might be in trouble. Yeah, they're pincering him. Lion is gonna try to get away. And oh, Loom Dun's like, how you doing there, buddy? And comes in from the north and right clicks him down and follows it up after the curse. And that is a swift job. And Two for one now as Sens take the early lead.
Looks like Void just picked up a Midas. It's a really good timing. Oh, four minutes and 50 seconds? Yeah, that's a damn good timing. He goes right for it, too. No no commitment Dyer's of any sort of boots or early makings of power threats whatsoever. It's, that's pretty good. That's, you know, we'll see. Pepita, I'm not sure how his uh, Void build might be. You know, first things I normally look at is how much his, his ult will add to the benefit of his whole team, and then maybe you'll see, like, a, a potential Agnum's grab, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of it here except for maybe a Sunstrike, mm -hmm. so... He'll probably go with your L Classic, you know, you mask your madness, you get the power treads, you get maybe Maelstrom, BKB, uh-oh, mid lane, a quick slash down as you saw right there, is sends return fire on the mid laner again, and they take down the Invoker. Yeah. I mean, that's just what happens. If you feed Ember an early kill, he gets six before your six, and he just pops you with the three spirit combo. Rough stuff. That's They're going to need to help this mid lane a lot. And unfortunately for this invoker, he went with the untraditional. He had. Oh. He went for this like Exort Wex build where he gets alacrity and like tries to right click them. But that means that he doesn't have Forge Spirits from the jungle. He doesn't have Cold Snap. Now, I don't know Invoker that much. I haven't played him since Dota 1. And even then, I was like, I don't but, know what the hell I'm doing. But is, did he get the Wex <laughs> early maybe just to have like the Ghost Walk now to fall back on in case he does get pressured? Well, he didn't have Quas yet. So oh. he just got Quas at level 6. So Now now, now it all makes sense. Yes. Not exactly A popped sure. collar, but a questionable build for here for DDX as he right-clicks out these side camps and try to get some help. But I'm more curious also about this fullback Juggernaut here. He's roaming it again support style. And this isn't the fullback I've come to know. This is a guy who plays a pretty mean Meepo. Could do an occasional good work with the core, but he's trying to be Juggernaut here. He's only level three with just a simple clarity and set of boots. I haven't really get, you know, I haven't even think I've seen a Blade Fury yet Dyer's even used. That's a bit unusual attack. for this early on in a Juggernaut. Yeah, one good thing about this Jug pick is that the, I think this healing ward has the potential to do a lot of work this game. They don't really have a great hero for killing the ceiling ward. Two of their cores are melee. This Enigma probably not going to be in a position to auto attack the ward. Maybe his idol. So if they can like kite, yeah, his idol ends can kill it. But if they friends. can somehow kite around this healing ward, they can negate a lot of the AOE damage that's going to come out as they go on back fiction. Yeah, first chrono, the chrono. Spears, sun strike fly, and there's nothing you can do. They time yes. it out with a very nice lockdown. Actually, Ink Dota commits into this one, and he's going into a couple, but he has the benefit of Loomdom right there on your silence, so they want to get fullback. But here comes a bit of backup from Nature's Prophet here, but no, fullback is going to end up going down. They make it a one-for-one. One. It's a support for their offlaner, a slight edge, I would say, for Isurus, but getting that kill was Pepita, so that definitely works out nicer for Isurus. So the Faceless Void... Grabbing a little bit of extra gold, so put that together with his Midas, and he's a regular Scrooge McDuck here early on. Yep. Good rotations from the Dyer. We're going to get a pause. Need a second. I'm actually surprised we didn't get more of these in the previous game, so it's just kind of something we come to love here. As uh, might be a bit of lag issues here is called out from uh, uh, Nature's Prophet. You know, typical day in the life of Dota. Pause, pause gaming. Pause gaming. I, I am no stranger to that. I, I'm sure you've know that from my terrible recent experiences doing some late night WCA. Oh god. Yeah. It was rough. I came back though. I got revived after I died. And uh, we're back and ready to cast more Dota. I'm loving the American Dota though. It's, it's a lot more fluid. I'm the own personal admin for controlling the lobbies and stuff so I don't have to worry about lack of passwords and such. So I'm happy about this. And and uh, we only have one more night at WCA. It's the it's the grand finals, I guess. And uh, I'm sure we'll all be happy to see that and just happy for it to be over. Meanwhile, bottom lane, though. <laughs> Ink Toda has actually rotated from the top and is trying to add some pressure here to Pepita, who's all by his lonesome. And they're actually committing another. And this this could be a bit of a tiff here. It's Ziz. Well, this Enigma went for a blink rush. Oh, so he wow. actually has a blink dagger right now. Oh, yeah. There it is going to town, baby. Somewhere in the world, Toby is creaming himself as a big black hole does get dropped. And, well, there we go. Pepita will fall after the back end of getting that previous fight. He's going to end up going down. And the silencer is on a killing spree. That's a good set of farm for a very greedy lineup where I would have figured the supports, especially the silencer, is going to have to be very, very selfless and probably not get any sort of farm. He is finding the farm with these last hit kills. I, I would imagine ideally you'd hand that over to your cores, but they're managing to make it work for the meantime. They pull out the fortification, they're adding pressure on the tier one, but it looks like Isurus are going for their own personal trade using the Treants, using the fort spirits on that mid lane, and well, fullback is going toe to toe with uh, the Tidehunter at the top. So there's your one tower down in the bottom, one tower in the mid lane is about to fall. 
So, a one for one, but up oh, top lane. Chronosphere, they want Fact Fiction. Sunstrike to follow, and they get it done. So, make it a tower plus a kill there for Isurus while Sens just get the one tower there on the bottom. Yep. And, you know, the standard Enigma build is, you know, just Soul Ring mechanism BKB. But I actually kind of like the Blink Rush this game if you think about it because. They're not actually. They're not going to want to be fighting into Isurus early game, so the mech would be kind of useless. But if they can just create some space by using this blink black hole every time it's off cooldown, they can actually just delay what Isurus wants to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if that's. So good I think it's pretty smart. That's worth. interesting. Um, yeah, but I agree. And more recently, you don't see Enigmas really Dyer's get the blink so early. They, they favor attack. more utility and survivability with the early mech grab, but we'll see if he makes it work in this one as Isuru's gaming, adding some serious pressure at the top, they pull out the fortification, swinging in from behind here as the supports, as they're looking to go on Ink Dota, Ink has no mana to dagger away, but it doesn't need it. He actually had already went the Vanguard build, previous game he didn't have to grab that as he had built up the farm, I guess, to go for more early ratings, but this time he's looking to tank up, and I guess that would be, you know, he's expecting to get caught out from a chrono from time to time, and he wants to be able to have the durability to withstand the onslaught that's to follow. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, though. If he can survive a Chrono Sunstrike, that's a lot of damage coming in. Yeah. We'll see, though. I think if it's just a uh, Void, he'll survive. But if they have a plus one with the Sunstrike, he's going to die every time. We'll see. It's, the pressure's Still on. Still a good pickup. Dota. Yeah, he's going to need to focus continually on getting that farm. He can definitely outshine the late game of Isurus, but it's a question of can he get to that point where the Spectre Dyer's will be able to outclass your Faceless Void or maybe the right click that Nature's Prophet can put together. Nature's Prophet, not your Null Talisman style of builds. He's got one Robe of the Magi though. As, uh, I wager he's probably going to go with an Orchid, the L Classic, if you will, of uh, Nature's Prophet as he continues to farm mm -hmm. out his forest side over here. And meanwhile, you see Fact Fiction is doing the Ancients on his side. He needs to get that Blink Dagger. He's getting pretty close, nearly 2k, but you know, would love to have a hold of that so he can get a big jump in Ravage if needed. Yeah, he's only 100 away from the Splink Dagger. It's going to be interesting to see when Dyer decide that it's time to 5v5. Because, uh, you know, they have all these massive teamfight, you know, wombo combo heroes with the Global Silence, the Black Hole, the Ravage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're not really going to have the damage to back it up until, you know, the Spectre starts getting items. So you have this point in the game where you have to decide at what point do we fight? And at what point are we giving too much up before we fight? It looks like Enigma's next item pickup so. will be that mech, so he just kind of flipped the script as far as item progression. As they will get that extra bit of survivability, would definitely help out. I'm not sure about the mech AoE. Do you think if you're outside the chrono, you'd be able to get a fair, I would imagine, a fair mech to help out your yeah, allies inside? Yeah, I think it's, it's 900 AoE, I think. It's relatively big, so it could definitely assist That's if he big. does slip away from getting caught out in any sort of chrono, but... That's a big if. It's going to be all about execution, yeah, as you talked about the big team fight. As, uh, uh, you know, i got to get one a game that I, I miss a kill. As it's going to be bottom lane. It's Ziz who quickly takes down that Nature's Prophet. There's your global silence. They're actually going on top. i got to jump right back up to here as it looks like they're going to consider making a jump in here. And, uh, oh, no! Oh. Yeah, that's not what you want to do. And now he's going to have to pay for it. Papita gets caught out with the Malphite, and he gets himself into the trees. Oh, another bad predicament. Black Hole is going to see you, though, as he pulls him right back in to the center, trying to right-click him down. Your curse is going to follow up. It's Juggernaut trying to walk away from here, but Pepita, uh, Pepita rather, still the target, and they do manage to take him down. It ends up being two, but more follow-ups on the other side of the things. It's a triple kill in the end for Ziz. He cleans up the other. Make it four all day for Sens Gaming right now. Big grabs up and down all across the map. So, a whiffed Chrono, not going to help with that one. What a disaster. What a disaster indeed. I don't, I don't know, that just, <laughs> you can't have things like that happen and expect to win with a lineup like this. You have to execute very well. No pressure. Speci no pressure. But you're right, you're I right. Think a with Chrono renders a void, you know, pretty much to just his right click and when you already just have like a Midas, your right click sucks. So. Yeah. You're not having a whole lot to follow, so it is it is added pressure. I mean, we you know everyone loves the chrono and what makes this hero such a platinum pick. At least definitely in the last patch. This patch it could be a bit hot and cold, but it's the setup you need for everyone else on your team to really be able to follow up with the big damage. And if it's not there, it's you're going to be in a bad bad predicament as we already saw. But speaking of being in a bad situation here, it looks like they're looking to flank here. Fullback pulls out. Oh no, this is a spin to go for creep. So. 
without, uh, oh, he's got a desperate, nope, silence, can't even do all, nah, it's, it's over here for fullback as he just gets manhandled there in the top lane, just in a bad spot and a bad time to, oh, look at this, Ziz is on the hunt, he smells lion blood and he wants to get a hold of it. Did he see it? No, he didn't, he didn't see him walk off to the side right there, so he commits on forward, won't be able to catch up, and lion does make his escape, he even Great tries TV. to throw it there. Yeah, he doesn't know that, he throws out the Dyer's searing change and won't get it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what Radiant can do at this point. I think they have to go for some sort of Roche play. But I mean, if they get caught at Roche, I mean, the game is basically Oh, they're jumping in on bottom. They want that Ink Dota. Let's see if the Vanguard will be able to help here. He does live through the initial onslaught, but will ultimately go down. Tempting time jumps in afterward, but obviously without that black hole, can't really hold anyone down. But oh man, the damage could really come out with the curse. He silenced up very, very low, and how you doing, buddy? There's a gush right to your mouth. Why don't you go ahead and swallow that one in as he takes him down in the end. EDX also desperately trying to get away. Nowhere to go. Ghost walk? They know it, though. They see the footsteps, and they're going to pull out the blood. They have downs detection? Here. I don't, they don't have any detection. Oh, meanwhile, once as Ember again, gets a kill in mid lane. Yeah, he is just constantly finding kills while attention is diverted elsewhere here. As he gets something done in the mid lane, and I'm still trying to see. You know, DDX does manage to slip out without the, with the lack of detection. He's... Gonna able to get away. He's wounded. He's weak with no mana. He'll slowly crawl his way away to safety here. As the bottom lane will continue to push on in from from Sens. It's, <laughs> it's, it's all Sens though. Thirteen. He's actually so slow. Oh, he's gonna get a haste rune. Uh, gonna get this haste rune. I got it. Yes. And we'll TP back. So. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. That is a wounded invoker, but thinking uh, his lucky is... stars, they did not have detection there, as it would have been another big takedown. But this is all Sens game. It's like. December is going to just get this mid tower Radiant's with no contest as the rest of the team's pushing the spot tower. Structures are yep. fortified. I mean, and even though Ink did Radiant's fall in that previous fight, obviously they, they came back big to re to yep. get the revenge, but he's still farming up here in the, the top lane. Now going for that uh, first sacred relic grab, he's nearly 3k. So he's, he's on he's on fair time here for the Spectre to, to follow it all up. But, you know, it's rough, man. Isuus are already having their hands full with uh, Ziz's Ember Spirit. On him being able to pick everyone apart, he's drawing attention towards him. That that allows them to forget about this Spectre who could just come out later. And you know, Ink Dota, notoriously known for his Meepo, did a pretty good job last game on the Spectre finding the farm and just bringing down the final curtain in the end of the game. So, looking for more of the same. It looks like here for the side of Sens as they smoke up. Ravage is available, and the Blink Dagger and the Black Hole. This could be, this could be a big a big thing here, real big. Mm -hmm. oh, they're going for top. Oh, the jump in Chrono. Chrono oh, Spirit. They want Ziz, oh, global but... silence. Oh, this is bad. Big Ravage to jump in. And don't forget about that black hole. It's it's moving its way on through. They're looking to go for fullback, though. They're going to try to right-click him down. Meanwhile, up in the above, they're trying to catch out, and they do. Lion ends up falling right there. Juggernaut ends up falling as well. It's a two for nil here. No black hole expended as of yet, so they have plenty of ammunition to continue to push on forward here and go for this Tier 2 tower. Yeah. And now there's no black hole. I mean, not black hole. There's no chronosphere, so they can't defend any of these towers. They're probably going to get top tower and maybe mid tower. I don't know. They might even just try for this tier three. I'm not sure how confident they're feeling. I would imagine. I imagine they're pretty, they'll just pretty back confident off this tier here. Two. They're just con you know moving on through. This is our tower to take. There's nothing you can do about it. This gives Ink even more gold. If you get this last hit, and he does not. Unfortunately, that pesky little creep gets it for him, but. Regardless, now he's pretty much got a hold of his Sacred Relic, uh, you know, and it's rough here. Isurus Gaming, this is their Summit 2 life on the line. If they lose this one, they're, they are out. They are donezo. They won't be able to come back into this one, and Sens will be able to move on to the next round. And they're looking good. For a team I have yet to cast, and I know, obviously, some of the individual players, they're putting on a pretty good show here. Yeah, they look pretty strong. Honestly, I think this one was just a drafting and lane decisions that sort of made this game what it is. They didn't really punish this greedy draft at all. What would have been they the best sort of way to punish this kind of a draft? If, if you're in a situation like, oh, hold on though, they're looking to go for ink. Blink in Chrono gets the sun strike over. The beat ball is going to roll on through and mamma mia, they get their kill on Spectre. And you know, they can get these kills all they want. It doesn't actually do anything though, because you get you commit two people to get this one kill, right? And then you've used, you've used your chronosphere. So now there's like two minutes almost where 
they can just do whatever they want. They have no fear. They can farm in front of your face. This ember, this ember can't die if there's no chrono. Like he can farm wherever he wants. He can go for kills. He can do whatever he wants. Oh, they actually, as I say that, I look at Nature's Profits items, and he has an orchid. It's, he can't actually play that crazy anymore. Yeah, it took him quite a while to just commit but, uh, to even getting that orchid. So he's he's not having the best time on this Nature's Prophet. I'm not seeing any sort of rat attempts as well. It's you know it, it's. Trouble times here is it seems like Isurus are just more on the constant defense and trying to yeah. buckle back here. As for Sens, it's more of them in control. Silencer, you know, he's gotten a couple of kills, but he's more <laughs> taking the reins of just being the true ward bitch, if you will. Just trying to keep vision for his whole team. He's got the reliable vitality booster. I would imagine this could be uh, moved into the, the Rod of Atos. That long range slow would be pretty beneficial, mm -hmm. I'd imagine. But like you were asking about, um, how do you punish a lineup like this? So I think if you're going to run like an ex like an Exord Invoker, you should get something that sets up early kills with it. You know, I've seen a bunch of different combos. I've seen like the Naga Potom. I think Team Secret's done that before. I don't know if it was with Invoker, but it's like a pretty good combo. You can do like SD Potom. I think any sort of Potom roaming. Combo would have actually been pot em. really good this game. Yeah, pot just pot em. Yeah. <laughs> oh, leaping above, they want ink. Oh no, oh, no. that is not not what you want to do with your Chronosphere, Pepita. Is uh, this? Oh, that is just morally devastating. I'm sure. At the same time, they whiffed Radiant Global Silence though. So. Oh, so an ult for an ult, I guess. But uh, you know, I think the Chrono is a little more. Valuable. Yeah, the Chrono is more important. So. so that's that's rough. That's rough Radiant stuff right there. Now Ink Dota is just falling. like, eh, no problem, easy. Walks back. And uh, now Isurus are, they're just constantly racking, you know, walking back and forth. They don't know what to commit for because bottom lane, there's also a split push. Like, Sens are just getting objectives done all over the place. Meanwhile, they're going to make an engagement here. And line gets wrecked easily. No ravage necessary. The lingering dagger. And again, Ziz doing work elsewhere. Bottom lane. Ziz in my pants as he takes another sweet kill. I'm going right for the high ground on this tower. And uh, fullback spins in and spins the hell out like, oh god, I can't do this. And there's just really nothing they could do. No candle to hold towards the Sense team as they are just all very, very farmed. Yep. And I mean, they're just going to slowly lose this game. I don't think there's any potential for a comeback, sadly. As much as I hoped there would be. Why? Because you want to do a game three? I don't know. <laughs> you just like a good you story. Know, a comeback. Yeah, good story. We've had a lot of comebacks, though, all these games. This patch has created big comebacks, mostly on the back of a Death Prophet, but... Yeah, it's know. just so hard against these heroes. Like, they picked one of the most greedy drafts I've seen in recent times, and they just got away with it. Uh -oh, Not only did they get away with it, but they got ahead early. Yeah, and, they're, and they're not letting up, either, as it seems to be here. And there's your Radiance now complete, so if times weren't tough enough... Especially for this Nature's Prophet. He could try to side push all he wants, but this Spectre's going to know what the dealio is. is he, uh, we'll have no opportunity, and Fullback desperately trying to farm it up. He is still trying to get an Agnum Scepter together, as I had wagered, that they want to be able to get a Chrono and just really be able to punish as much as possible. He's still moving on forward. He has a level 2 ult here. He feels the Radiance He's got burn. a s <laughs> second Battle Fury on this Ember Spirit. Oh, the Cleave. He's just enormous. Someone get this guy a bra. It's double cleave going to be in the works right here. Is he Too much cool cleavage. Here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a kid trip. Jumps on back and... Well, I don't know, man. It's just a matter of them just getting to their optimal bit of farm. They can create a little extra space, eventually move on into the Roche, get a hold of an Aegis, and then maybe go for the final crushing blow. But there is that Battle Fury yeah. now. Completely I mean, they're in no hurry right now. Yeah, it's, it's all their game. And, you know, last game they were so confident they were even force staffing their own team into trouble. They were just... <laughs> happy to have this win is they're going to continue on forward it looks like and for Isurus Gaming man it's, it's it's hard times right now really it's it's all about the chrono and well, he's like 50% for landing him so it's rough right now Pepita is a, is a class player we've seen him many a time carry big games in the hands of like your specters and what have you but he is just not getting mm -hmm. it done here with this faceless void uh oh top lane though you see fullback fullback sees them he spins he gets the hell out of there nothing really else to say about that is Ink will just gladly move on and take the farm instead. Yep. And this Tidehunter is working towards his Refresher Orb. He's about... Does he have any other components? Ah, he's pretty far away, so he's about 2,000 gold off his Refresher. Wait, who 
has almost refresher? Sorry, I'm, I'm... tied. Oh, it's tied. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about two k, and this Enigma just picked up a Shiva's like. Ugh. Team fight. Team yeah. fight is very much real here. Is it's going to be a lot of fireworks once they jump in. The black hole. It's set up with a ravage, and then a secondary ravage if you want. Just get a little extra time, and then the black hole fall of Shiva's. There's your global silence. Fullback desperately trying to get away, but nope. No one gets away as Lumdum takes in the last kill. Gets a mega kill streak all together, and. Well, it was uh, Ink Dota who came in with that haunt and ripped apart the other support. So now only three to stand. Both of the supports do have buyback, but they're going to hold it for now as they have pretty puny death timers regardless. And God damn it, Ziz! Every time I like go, I'm, at, I'm somewhere else. He's, he's just getting kills on the other side of the map and making me look terrible with my camera. He ninjas up another one. This is too good. Oh, well. Mid lane, though, they'll get that tier two. Radiance middle tower and uh, they're gonna fight. They have all Radiance everything they want. Middle they have the ultimate. They don't have the global, attack. but they have Ravage. They have Black Hole. They have everything yeah. they could want if they want to make something happen here. Are fortified. Radiance mm -hmm. top tower is under attack. Are they gonna play it safe? Looks like they are. Yeah, they can buckle back here. Attack. They can uh, go for the Roche. It's gonna go want. farm the lanes. Probably go for Roche soon. Yeah, just go for Roche for God's sakes. I don't think anyone's done it yet, right? This is a. I mean, they have like perfect ward coverage too. Yeah, they just need to do it. Just get in there and get it done. Put the big boy down. There they go. Oh, uh, looks like ha -ha. there's a smoke on. Yeah, tree on here. I see, it. I see what you're doing. Yeah, stupid tree on. Get the hell out of here. And that gold. Mm -hmm. The bounty rune. Thank you very much. Six point eight two. And now uh, they're smoking up here. It looks like Isurus are like. This could be our opportunity, fellas. They're all going to be together in that pit. Oh, an Orchid not going to stop him from blinking away, though. And... No, God, no. I see who's gaming. They're going to have to run. There we go. Jumping Pepita lands this Kronos one. He gets on it on two. two. Yeah, very nice. Lumna might fall here, but we still have big ultimates to follow up if they want. And there's one of them. A Ravage. A Black Hole. Oh catches on a lot. As they rip through with a <laughs> slide of fist. Ziz with a triple kill. Yeah. A valiant effort. I don't know. That It looked like they were like, we just got to get out of here. We, we tried to make a jump on Enigma. He got away. We should have just been like, okay, well, we can't commit. And they'd run back. But Pepita's like, no, boys, we got this. Jumps in, catches on two, but all of the big ults were not involved. So they could just follow up with the, with the big, big show of the Black Hole and the Ravage. And it was just no mercy at that point. And now only two alive. Buyback available on your Invoker. But as you see by the net worth graph, it's been all since this game. Nearly 16k. They go towards the high ground. They start laying in the right clicks on this tier three, and really, I don't think Isuus are going to be able to get past this one. As they look to fall, and this will be a 2-0 series by Sens if that's the case, and they'll move on. And well, they look good. They look real good. You know, I really want to see if someone what they do if, if someone tries to punish this greed. But, I mean, they played this game really well. Jump in Shivas. There's your Global Silence now out and available. Ziz manages to slip away from that one, but Pepita also moves on in with his BKB. Omni Slash on Tide. Tide's like, stop tickling me. Throws out his Anchor Smash, and they punish Fullback for trying to make something happen there. And your buyback also comes out from Lion, and still no one falls on the side of Sens. They can't get it done. And they didn't have the Chrono either to really help with that fight, so... Six to twenty-five. Oh man, and this tide just finished his refresher too. Oh man. Oh boy. <laughs> Asura's gaming is the window of opportunity is pretty much slammed shut. Slammed I'm sure if we had a stats man, they would say the there's never been a comeback when tide gets you know all these items at twenty whatever six minutes or whatever. The refresher is purchased before twenty-eight minutes. <laughs> he has a ninety-two percent chance of winning. <laughs> I actually, Tide almost never loses when he gets refreshing. It was pretty crazy. It'd have to be a pretty long and girthy game if both teams have that kind of much farm to be able to come back. But you know, you're right. I mean, it's all sends this game though. The science kids channeling their inner Bill Nye and bring science the game kids on board. indeed. Yeah. Bill Nye gaming. Bill Nye. Gaming. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Not Nye. <laughs> Bill denied. As, uh, as Surus might be. Bill denied. Taked out of this one is. DDX desperately farming it out. He's he's had that Necrobook Midas combo for quite a while and really been hindered for farm. And a Basilisk here is, I don't know, is that a Vlad's in the works? I'm not too sure what that is about. But meanwhile, Fullback gets uh, Searing Chain, pulls out the heel, and maybe finally Sens will go for the Roche here. Maybe they're touch nervous. Like, oh, maybe if they get a big Chrono on us, somehow they'll follow it up with big damage. But 
I don't think they have to worry about anything here as they do start going at it. And Ziz with a Daedalus and two Battle Furies here. His slightest fist will pretty much put any support on Asurus' side to shame right now. Yep. Uh oh, here we go. Pepita does catch out Ink Dota, fall Sun Sunstrike, but I think the window of opportunity to get this done on a Spectre is gone. Oh, nice bash, though. Come on, oh. RNG. Oh, no. Oh. That's it. Uh, that's, that's one it. more bash and you would have had it, I think. Damn it, Ice Frog. <laughs> and he makes his way out. Has Meanwhile, they do the complete out the Roche. What the hell? Kyrian tried to steal the Aegis. Oh. Cheeky fool. Not going to be so lucky. Was not successful. So they take down the two, and uh, wait, did he bite back? No, okay, no. Pepita's getting his ass beat in his own base right there from the haunt. Has to step back and away right here, and I imagine it sends game. They are just kind of putting Isurus through a torture rack right here. It's, oh god, Nidara, he is running away. Uh, luckily, Ink doesn't see it, and he won't commit on engaging. But oh no, he sees it now. What, Nidara? What are you uh -oh. doing? No! Oh god! He's in trouble. Ah, uh, there's nothing you can do, boy. Desperation. TP? Yeah. Maybe it'll work. He will work. Yeah. Wow, he makes his way out. <laughs> Small props for that one for the uh, flimsy little uh, The four-second hex. Yeah. It works out to his benefit. Not too bad. What a spell. And he gets back into base because they're going to need the assistance. Their racks are now under the gun. Necrobook also going to be popped, but um, yeah, that Necrobook is, is dead. That's a free 200 gold for Ziz right there. No yeah. problem with that. The only way they want to fight at this point is if... Uh, they make a large mistake Big throw. by science things. Not even just a 322, like a, a 644. Yeah. Like all the force would be required. Uh oh. Here we go. Nidara. One searing chain and a gush, and he's pretty much dead there. And uh, there he does go down from the extra bit of burn. And fullback also caught out. There's your global silence. Here's your last effort. Come on, Pepita, make it happen. Get that Ziz boy. Sunstrike to follow. It's got to go on Loomdum. They still can't do half the damage, though, to Ziz, and he lives. Searing Chain, Slash down. They're going to go for Rax. This is going to be it. The Tal, I imagine, going to be thrown in momentarily. No Black Hole even dropped yet. Uh, the Double Ravage was already uh, used, but that's it. It's over. Sends putting on a very impressive show here. 2-0 against Isurus Gaming. Wow. Strong showing. Strong showing. All right, so that's I'll be interested to see uh, what they do against, like, you know, tier two teams, I would call them, in NA. More formidable opponents. Yes. Like Snaw and... Yeah. I don't know if you'd call Narvi tier two. I don't know. Whatever. That's, that's, All the, those teams. Uh, that's the real test, because we don't really know how long this team has been playing together, and some of those teams have been together for quite a while, so they have great, you know, chemistry. So we'll have to see how it goes as yep. Sens put on a pounding here. Taking down Isurus Gaming 2-0. Isurus, a valiant effort, a great strong showing at the start, but your time is done. But we bid you adieu here at the Summit 2. It's brought to you by G2A. Of course, being casted to you of course, by the Beyond the Summit crew, I am Dakota. Catch me over on Twitter. You can catch me at Cobble Guy. Joining me is my good friend, Mr. F4L. You can catch him over on Twitter, at F4L. Dota, did I say that right? Yep. Fantastic. And uh, Twitch, too, at F4L Dota. No, not the S Twitch, though. Can't no, say the Twitch. No, no I'm kidding. Not the you Twitch. Why not? Twitch. Go to the Twitch. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Everyone does, don't they? No. I've been there. No? It's pretty empty. Ah. I'm like one of three people. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> three people? I'm Come kidding. on, though. No, no he's, he's... I get like guy. 20 or 30 viewers or something. I'm just... I'm just fucking with you. All right. Well, we'll be back. We got one more series to come. And that series is going to be the Hot Hands Hand Warmers going against Flipside Tactics NA. Should be a excellent matchup. I'm looking forward to it, folks. It'll be probably a small break since it was only a two-game series, but be sure to stick around, be sure to follow, and be sure to hang tight. We'll be back in just a moment.